la I, I know. <laughs> I'm so sorry if I was that stuff. Um, uh, so, the communique for the third Lagos International Maritime Week, um, the third edition of the Inter Lagos International Maritime Business to Business Conference was held at the prestigious Lagos Oriental Hotel, Lekki, Lagos, Nigeria, from the 15th to the 17th of May 2018. It was organized by Zoo Maritime Resources Limited. The theme of the conference is Developing Maritime Infrastructure in Africa. The aim of the conference and exhibition was to direct the world maritime traffic to Nigeria during the period of the conference. It was cumulatively a week of activities showcasing the best of maritime industry in Africa, networking, advocating, and preferring solutions to African maritime transportation challenges, and placing Africa as the preferred destination for maritime investment. The Lagos International Maritime Week 2018 provided an invaluable platform for organizations to expand their market share in the maritime industry in Nigeria, West Africa, and to meet regional stakeholders. The conference convener, Mrs. Oritemus Mastosan Edodo Emore, an international maritime lawyer, explained in her welcome address that the objective of the conference was to highlight the challenges that the maritime industry in Nigeria is facing due to the def def uh, deficiencies in the maritime infrastructure and the need to address those challenges and deficiencies. She stated that Nigeria has a responsibility to tackle these challenges because Nigeria has the greatest cargo share in Africa. She also stated that the maritime industry is still developing and Nigeria has a long way to go in harnessing its ocean resources for the benefits of its citizenry. In addition, there were goodwill messages from Mr. Ladi Lawson, the Honorable Commissioner, Lagos State Ministry of Transportation, Mr. Laurent Polonox, the Consul, Consul General de France, and Mrs. Ola Yinka Ola Dunjoye, the Honorable Commissioner, Lagos State Ministry of Commerce, Industry, and Cooperatives. The conference com comprised of six roundtable sessions and a plenary lecture where various subjects such as marine security, maritime law and arbitration, port development and the ease of doing business, marine transportation, marine environment, insurance and women in maritime and maritime trainings were discussed. The public lecture was rendered by Dr. Kofi Mbia the principal partner of Alliance Legal with the topic building an efficient maritime infrastructure as a catalyst for Africa's accelerated economic growth, in which he drew attention to the deficiencies in the maritime infrastructure, not just in Nigeria, but also in West Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. After the public lecture, discussions commenced with the introduction of speakers for the roundtable conferences. After the roundtable conf um, conference um, discussions were held, the following resolutions were passed. One, a maritime policy that takes account of all the key elements of the maritime domain, utilization and preservation is required to create a context within which maritime infrastructure in Africa can be meaningfully examined. Two, the development of maritime infrastructure in African countries should be reckoned with within the framework of maritime clusters and not just physical infrastructure existing in isolation. Three, the maritime policies of African countries must undergo a paradigm shift from dwelling on individual modes of transport and development in silos to a new strategy that embraces a balanced and integrated modally complementary transport system that not only takes into account the sustainability and the technical technological challenges but also takes account of the wider multiple use of the oceans four ports as a major part of shipping infrastructure are top value generating facilities that stimulate trade and also serve as gener revenue generating streams for governments and is a veritable tool of employment therefore its efficiency and development is extremely important to the African continent. Five, African ports must be developed with future innovations in mind and must take cognizance of the uh, connectivity and access to multimodal transport systems. It must be modally complementary with appropriate network of 
waterway, pipeline, railroad, and air transport with the coasts and the hinterlands. Six, African countries need to develop a comprehensive maritime policy that does not only focus on maritime transport, but also emphasizes the broad spectrum of multiple sea uses. These multiple sea uses within the framework of the policy define the maritime cluster approach for synergistic effect. Seven, there is a need to increase public awareness on the importance of ports and maritime infrastructure as an invaluable economic asset. This appreciation will encourage civil society and other pressure groups to call on accountability from public officials and regulatory bodies with respect to the operations of the ports. Eight, maritime infrastructure is, a capital, is capital intensive and worsened by the fact that most African ports were planned and developed without considering the future. Thus, the investments required are often beyond the reach of the treasuries of most African countries. This situation requires that negotiations for funding to develop marine infrastructure is to be done from the perspective of the potential growth in the sector. Nine, it is important to critically appraise the extent of the protection made available through various way laws for merchant ships in the Nigerian waters. Examination of these laws will provide proper perspective into whether masters and seafarers can have armed guards on board ships, their rights and obligations on the application of such force on board. Ten, the challenges hindering the use of armed guards by marine police include the absence of a clear legal framework, inadequate manpower, inadequate human capacity, and interagency rivalry and poor funding. Eleven, Improved interagency collaboration would address the challenge of interagency rivalry as far as marine security in Nigeria is concerned. The Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency could organize quarterly maritime security stakeholder meetings as this would encourage collaboration amongst the maritime security agencies. 12. The infrastructure of the Federal High Court, both in terms of physical structures and human capital, leave much room for improvement. The Federal High Court, being the only court with the jurisdiction on maritime matters, should ensure capacity building and development to meet the justice requirements of the maritime sector. 13. The purpose of the establishment of the Capitage Fund is to help develop the capacity of ship owners whilst empowering them to compete favorably with foreign ship owners. But the Capitage Vessel Financing Fund initiative is not working because funds set aside is not being deployed for the purpose for which it had been set aside. 14. The non-disbursement of the capitage fund has grossly reduced local participation, which has created many problems, including the loss of jobs within the maritime sector. 15. The Cabotage Act provides for guidelines for disbursement of the cabotage fund, uh, cabotage fund, which include recommendations by a bank to NEMASA and to the minister who has the authority to approve the disbursement of such funds. Therefore, if there is bureaucra bureaucratic difficulty in the disbursement of the funds, the current administration can get financial experts to advise on the disbursement of such funds. 16. The government cannot avoid the responsibility of creating an enabling environment for business owners and, uh, to thrive in a way that would in a way that would develop an enabling environment, and this calls for inter-ministerial collaborations to develop such policies and eradicate bottlenecks in the administration of the maritime industry. 17. The administration of the capital vessel financing fund uh, fund has to be more innovative. Lobby groups can be created for this purpose to ensure that the disbursement of these funds is given to deserving ship owners. Uh, to deserving ship owners. Legal practitioners and other professional bodies can also lobby the government for the growth of this industry. 18. The workability of the Cabotage Act does not only revolve around the disbursement of the Cabotage Fund, it also revolves around the age of the vessels in addition to the capacity of indigenous owners and more attention needs to be paid to these other areas. 19. There, is, there are a lot of deficiencies in the ship repair industry and there is a need to develop capacity to accommodate more tonnage. 20. The role of the private sector in lobbying the government is very important because lobbying 
often facilitate good policies. 21. To circumvent the issue of lack of technological know-how, there has to be partnerships with the developers of the technology to ensure adequate transfer of useful technology in the maritime sector. 22. The Customs is a key, um, as a key organization assists trade facilitation, national security, environmental security, as well as social and health security. Their recruitment of a young workforce has aided their ability for revenue generation. This capacity must also be balanced with the need to facilitate Nigeria's international trade participation. 23. Integrity is key in the development of maritime infrastructure in Nigeria, and integrity is driven by voluntary compliance, and voluntary compliance is driven by good governance. 24. Capacity for the satisfaction of maritime insurance claims is gradually being built in Nigeria. The insurance industry has stri strived to build integrity and public confidence. However, there is a need for greater patronage of indigenous insurance firms in marine insurance for Nigeria's maritime activities. 25. Mar uh, maritime activities are specialized and requires costly training and internship. However, inadequate funding and deficient infrastructure bedevil the development of human capital required for the industry. 26. There is an urgent need for a skills gap analysis and work plan for capacity development with timelines for the implementation determined, to be determined by employers of maritime um, services and relevant government agencies. This includes addressing the problem of the unavailability of ocean-going vessels for seafarers trained in Nigeria, as this is a major stigma on the human capital development in the industry. 27. The realization of the full potential of the blue economy requires the effective inclusion of all societal groups, especially women, youth, local communities, and um, marginalized and underrepresented groups. In relation to economic development, these groups often face limited access to opportunities, inadequate legal standing, poor opportunities to contribute to value addition, low benefits, and lack of re recognition of the unique and valuable role they play in the society. 28. That collaboration between the academia, the industry, and key stakeholders should be encouraged. Major uh, stakeholders should draw up a robust plan and curriculum covering both academic and practical aspects of maritime education and advise the Nigerian University Commission on scene. 29, and the final one. The presence of organizations like Women, uh, Women International Shipping and Trading Association and Women in, Af Women in Maritime Africa has assisted in bringing women issues in the maritime sector to the forefront because of the skills gap with respect to women and the dearth of female participation in the maritime industry. Thank you.